All right, good morning, everybody. Our ongoing quest for more knowledge on fractions continues. Welcome to Lesson 90. We're talking about reducing fractions, part two. So you remember we reduce fractions by dividing by the greatest common factor, the GCF. And you always want to try to reduce a fraction by dividing by the greatest common factor, but you also always want to double check at the end to make sure you can't reduce the fraction again. Look at your numerator and denominator. Did you leave a pair of even numbers or both numbers ending in a 5 or a 0 or any other of those divisibility rules? Because some of these guys are going to get a little bit trickier for you to divide. So you always want to try to find the greatest common factor, but I've met enough fifth graders in my day, I know they don't always list them all out. So a lot of times if kids are trying to reduce something like 1236, they go, oh, I know, I can divide both sides by six. And you're absolutely right, you can. Six is a common factor. And 12 divided by 6 is 2. 36 divided by 6 is 6. And a lot of times I start seeing kids making this mistake. Look at the numerator and the denominator. They are both even numbers, aren't they? So you don't have to erase everything and then go and find the greatest common factor. If you make a mistake like this, just go ahead and divide it one more time. What could you also divide 2 6 by? Looks to me like if they're both even, I can divide it again both by 2, right? So now let's take a look. 2 divided by 2, hey, that's 1. 6 divided by 2, that's going to give us 3. So really, 1236 reduces down to 1 -third. Now, let's take a look at what happened here. I chose 6, which 6 is a common factor. I have 6 here and 6 here. But it's not the greatest common factor. 12 would have actually been the greatest common factor, right? So let's go and take a look. What would happen if I would have used the greatest common factor right away? Divide the numerator by 12. Divide the denominator by 12, right? 12 divided by 12 is 1. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So the thing about the greatest common factor, if you use it, you'll only have to divide once. But again, don't think that if you miss finding the greatest common factor, which it happens, just feel free to go and divide it out some more until you do get it into the lowest terms. Okay, let's try a couple more like this. So 60 over 100, the big thing I see a lot of kids do, they go, oh, Mr. Hines, I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 10. And you're absolutely right, you can. So then I see kids going off doing this. 60 divided by 10 is 6. 100 divided by 10 is 10. But the problem is when you're all done, Get this six tenths, is that as low as it can go? Not if they are both even numbers, right? If they're a pair of even numbers, I'm going to have to divide again, this time by two. So six divided by two, that is three. Ten divided by two, that's five. Three fifths is 60 hundreds in its lowest terms. Let's take a look. What did we miss this time? What would have been the greatest common factor? 
of 60 and 100. I have 20 over here, and I have 20 over here. A lot of times kids will miss this one. You want to divide both sides by 20 if you only want to divide it once, right? So 60 divided by 20 is 3. 100 divided by 20 is 5. If you use the greatest common factor, you're only going to have to divide once. But if you miss it, Get in the habit of double checking and making sure you're in the lowest terms. Otherwise, you're going to have to divide some more. Let's try this one. Divide 25 hundredths. And the big mistake I see kids make, they'll go and divide both sides by 5, right? So 25 divided by 5. 25 divided by 5, that is 5. A hundred divided by five, that is 20. They're both not even, but our divisibility rules say if a number ends in five or zero, I can divide it out by five some more, right? So divide the top by five and divide the bottom by five still if I want to get it into lowest terms. 5 divided by 5, that's going to give us 1. 20 divided by 5, that is 4. So 25 hundredths written in his lowest terms truly is a fourth. What happened here? What did I miss? Instead of dividing by 5, what you should have divided by, if you only want to do it once, would be 25 is the greatest common factor, right? 25 divided by 25, and 100 divided by 25. Double check. 25 divided by 25, yep, that's 1. 100 divided by 25 is 4. So you could divide it two or three times, but you want to try to always find the greatest common factor, and you'll only have to divide it once. Let's take a look at this one. There are four blue marbles and eight white marbles in the bay. If one marble is taken from the bag without looking, what's the probability, which is going to be written as a fraction, that the marble will be white? So remember, my denominator is always the total number I'm talking about. I'm talking about four blue and eight white. Well, four plus eight, that sounds like a grand total of 12 marbles, right? So 12 would be my denominator. And they want to know what the probability that it's going to be white. I am talking about eight white marbles. So I have a probability right now of 8 out of 12. But 8 out of 12, that's a pair of even numbers for sure. What do I want to divide by to reduce it? If you're saying 2, you're going to be dividing a couple of times. Actually, the greatest common factor here would be 4, right? I mean, you could use 2, but you're going to have to do twice as much work because you'll have to end up dividing it twice. So let's take a look. 8 divided by 4, that's 2. And 12 divided by 4, that is 3. I always want to double check and make sure my fraction is written in as lowest terms possible. Write 40% as a reduced fraction. And I gave you a little reminder here, percents, that word C-E-N-T means 100. So percents always have a denominator of 100. So I'm going to start off with 40 as my numerator and 100 for my denominator, right? Because C-E-N-T, that means cent. 
of a hundred. So what do you think the greatest common factor of 40 and 100 is? A lot of times kids will pick 10 and it'd be okay, but be aware, 10 is not the greatest common factor. It's just a common factor. Actually, our greatest common factor is 20. A lot of times kids will miss it and it's okay to miss it as long as you realize you're going to have to divide twice then. Numerator divided by numerator, 40 divided by 20, hey, that's 2. And denominator divided by denominator, 100 divided by 20 is 5. So I have a final fractional answer of 2 fifths, which is in its lowest terms. Check out this one, reduce each answer to the lowest terms. 19 minus 1, yeah, that gives us 18, right? And a lot of times when we switch back and forth between multiplying and dividing and then we get an adding and subtracting, sometimes kids miss this. All we do for subtracting, if the denominators are the same, is to keep it the same. So I have 18 24ths. Is that answer as low as it can get? Do I have to divide by the greatest common factor? Yes, I do. What do you think it is? They're both even, so two would be a common factor. But wait a minute, I think three would be a factor, right? You're absolutely right, but that is also just a common factor. The greatest common factor actually would be 6. 18 divided by 6, that's going to give us 3. 24 divided by 6, that's going to give us 4. So 18 24 in its lowest terms is three-fourths. Check out this one. Right, 0 0.7, otherwise known as seven-tenths, as a percent. So I'm going to start off writing seven-tenths as a fraction, right? And I gave you a little reminder down here in red. Remember, percents always have a denominator of a hundred. So I could give it a denominator of 100, and I just have to figure out what is going to be my magic number in the middle. I want to multiply by a fraction equal to 1 to make an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. So 10 times what is going to give me 100? Do we know? 10 times 10 is going to give you 100, right? And since I know I have to multiply by a fraction equal to 1, if I'm multiplying the denominator by 10, i got to go ahead and multiply that numerator by 10. 7 times 10 is 70. So if I have to go and write 7 tenths as a percent, it would just be 70%. 70 out of 100, right? And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper on today's creative quiz, and good luck. That's all, folks.